Today I'm so excited because I will share with you how I prepare easy and delicious recipes for Shabbat on Friday as a full-time working mom with small kiddos when I had a busy week and I was not able to Shabbat meal prep earlier in the week. And if you like this kind of content all about how as a busy woman you can still make easy and delicious kosher recipes, have fun preparing for Shabbat and the holidays, as well as being part of an amazing supportive community, helping each other to have a more productive and more meaningful life, please consider subscribing as I would love to have you be part of our amazing From It Up family. So let me put on a pretty tickle and let's jump into it. When I plan my Shabbat meal prep, I try to take recipes that have similar cooking or baking time. I also start my Shabbat prep with the recipes that will take the longest to cook or bake. So today I will make three cooked salads that take about the same cooking time. I put my cherry tomatoes in a pan with about a head of peeled garlic to make a tomato confit. I almost cover them with olive oil and I will put them aside. In another pan, I will put three heads of garlic and I will almost cover them with oil. Then I will put them aside. For our third cooked salad, I will peel some fresh tomatoes using this amazing tomato peeler and of course I will leave the link in the description box below. I need to use these tomatoes but I don't have enough to make a full recipe. So after cutting them and placing them in a heavy bottom pot, I will add a can of diced tomato to make our matbucha or chukchuka or sometimes people will call it salad cuite. I will put it on medium heat until it bubbles and at the same time I will put the tomato confit and the garlic confit in the oven set at 300 degrees Fahrenheit so they will all be done cooking at the same time. Another fabulous Shabbat recipe that will necessitate for it to cook longer is the cholent or dafina. And as many of you told me that you did not own a crock pot, I'm giving you the version of my aunt Tata Simone, which uses a large pot. I take my verified rice and wheat kernel and put them in cooking bags. In the blé or wheat kernel, I will add chicken powder. And in both bags, I will add paprika, salt, garlic and in the wheat I will add some hot paprika but it is completely optional I will add oil in both and then in the rice I will add one cup of water I will take out the air of the bag and make a loose knot then I mix everything thoroughly I put three cups of water in the wheat kernels and I would totally feel comfortable to use quinoa if I had gluten-free guests. I take out the air from the bag which is like super important because believe me it happened to me more than once that the bag bursted open while being cooked. I put aside the two bags and I prepare the spices. In a bowl I add curcuma, paprika, salt and cumin and two cups of water. I mix everything together. And once that everything is fully combined, I will add one tablespoon of tomato paste. I also add a bit of hot paprika sometimes. I mix everything until fully dissolved and I set it aside. By this time, the tomatoes are boiling, so I decrease the heat to low and I will leave it uncovered until the water completely evaporates. I usually use regular potatoes for the chola, but today I'm using the baby potatoes we bought in our Costco haul. While I'm peeling the baby potatoes, I have to repeat to myself that I really love my kids. I love my husband. I love my kids. I love my husband. <laughs> Since peeling these baby potatoes takes so much more time than regular potatoes that I would peel and cut in no time. But I know my hubby and kiddos prefer these potatoes, so I continue peeling the potatoes. After what looks like an eternity, I place the potatoes in a large pot. I add some oil and I coat the potatoes evenly. I add chickpeas that I will rinse before putting them in the pot. The meat that I'm using today is veal shank with bones. The bones with the marrow gives an amazing taste to the cholent and it will keep the meat moist. 
I add the eggs and my rule of thumb is one egg per person. To make the cholent extra special and also because it is the only way my children will eat any sweet potato, I add a Korean sweet potato. It is sweeter and it holds better in the dafina than a regular sweet potato, but I use either or interchangeably. I add the bag of rice and the bag of wheat kernels and then I add the equivalent of a full head of peeled garlic and I will place them around the pot. I add the spice slurry on top of the cooking bags. For extra yumminess, I will add two dates. It will add a certain sweetness and it will balance out the spices. Of course, I will check them for bugs before placing them. I open them and look for any dark spots or white grains that could indicate a bug. In this case, it was beautifully clean, so I just added it to the pot. I fill the pot with water until the cooking bags are fully submerged. Then I place it on the stovetop on a high heat. I cover the pot and let it cook until it comes to a boil. I brush and rinse the beets and I put them in a pot of cold water with salt. I will bring them to a boil and after I will decrease the heat and let them simmer for about 30 to 40 minutes or until fork tender. For our next salad, I will peel three large carrots with, in my opinion, the best peeler in the world. <laughs> but I'm curious, are you a U-shaped peeler lover or a straight blade carrot peeler lover? <laughs> let me know in the comments below. I place them in a pot of cold water with about one teaspoon of salt and I will bring the water to a boil and let them cook in that water for about three minutes or until fork tender. While the carrots are cooking in a pan, I put olive oil and I get a red onion because I just love the color. I keep my onions in a cool and dark place and I have already explained how I store my produce for them to stay fresh for weeks in a previous video and I will leave the link in the video link above and the description box below. After removing the outer layer, I will put my onion on a wet paper towel and this is the best hack ever to avoid crying when cutting onions. I'm not a pro chef, but this is how I cut my onions to have a decent diced onion. I cut the onion in slices almost all the way to the bottom, but oops, this one was way too deep. And then afterwards I flip the onion and cut it again in the cross section. Another plus of using a paper towel is that it makes it super easy to carry the onions to the pan. I let the onions saute on low to medium heat for about 5 minutes and while the onions are frying, the carrots should be cooked and the way I see that they are ready is I insert the tip of my blade in the carrot. If it penetrates it easily like now, then they are ready. While they're cooling down, I will prepare our meat. I'm using veal minute steak that I left in the freezer for 30 minutes or so to make it easier to cut. I cut the meat in strips of about half an inch each. Once that the meat is fully cut, then I'm gonna place everything in the bowl. By now, the onions are done cooking, I give it a last stir, and then I will add the meat. I let it cook uncovered for about two to three minutes. And while it is cooking, I will press two cloves of garlic. The meat cooks very rapidly, so I add some teriyaki sauce and mix everything until fully combined. I let it cook for about two minutes and in that time, I will cut a green onion. I add the fresh pressed garlic. I mix everything continuously until the sauce thickens. That will take about a minute or two usually. Then finally, when the sauce is fully thickened, I will take it off the fire and then I will add some green onions, some sesame seeds, and voila, the veal teriyaki is ready. By this time, the cholent is boiling and I will uncover it and place a wooden spoon in the pot to avoid for it to overflow. <laughs> I'm not sure if it really works, but my grandmother used to do it, so I do it too. The carrots are cooled down and I will cut them in strips. I will also cut finely one clove of garlic. In a pan, I will add some olive oil, some tomato paste or chili paste, some paprika, cumin, salt, and lemon juice to balance the spices. I will add my garlic, then my carrots, and I will mix everything until fully combined. 
Once that it's fully combined, I will add some parsley, but you are free to omit it all together. I mix it again to make sure that all the carrots are fully covered with this amazing sauce and this salad is done. In another pan, I'm gonna put some olive oil, chopped onions, three cloves of pressed garlic, and then I will let it cook uncovered for about two to three minutes. While they are cooking, I prepare a pot of salty water and I let it come to a boil. While it is coming to a boil, I will prepare my side dish. In a large bowl, I would put some veggie wash, enough for the water to bubble, and I will add my green beans and agitate them in soapy water. This will help to dislodge the dirt and bugs on the green beans, and I will let them soak for about five minutes. While they are soaking, the base for my fish is cooked, and I will add some paprika, some coriander, some salt, and I will mix everything together. I add another pop of color to our fish by adding one red bell pepper cut in strips. I add some tomato paste and I'm so excited as I never saw kosher tomato paste in a tube before. <laughs> Did you ever see that? I add about two to three tablespoons, then I incorporate it fully by mixing it in. I add one cup of water or more depending if I want a thick or a thinner sauce. Then I add about 20 green olives. I add also some chickpeas, about one cup. And finally, I will add slices of lemon. I will mix everything together and I will cover the pan and let it cook on medium heat for about five minutes or until tender. While the base of our fish is cooking, I drain my green beans and I rinse them thoroughly. I make sure that there is no more soap on it because who wants to eat soapy green beans? I then remove the tips of the green beans and I sometimes remove the wire or the hard part of the green beans but today I just don't have the patience and also because I will be putting it on the warming plate until we eat it on Friday night, it will have also more time to be softened. I'm curious, do you remove the wire of your green beans? Do you think it's a must? Let me know in the comments below. I put my green beans in the boiling water for about three minutes. While they are cooking, I will prepare the sauce for the green beans by cutting two green onions and adding them to a vegan butter or oil, depending on what you have also. I add pressed garlic and ginger, and then I mix everything until fully incorporated. While the sauce is cooking, I quickly drain the green beans and I come back to the sauce and I will add some sesame oil, then some honey, and I will mix until fully combined and I will set it aside. The veggies for the fish are cooked and I drizzle some honey to balance the acidity of the tomatoes. I will add about one to two tablespoons, but it is absolutely optional. I will reserve about four tablespoons of sauce that I will use later on in the recipe. Once that I have removed the sauce, I'm gonna add the pieces of salmon, leaving a small space at least between the pieces of salmon. Then I will drizzle them with the sauce that we have reserved earlier. Then I'm gonna cook them covered for about 10 minutes. I go back to my green beans and I will remove the excess of water. I put them in the pan with the sauce and I make sure to coat every part of the green beans. Once they are fully coated, I will set them aside. The beets are cooked, so I will drain them out of their water. There is almost no more water in the tomatoes, so I will add some olive oil, some garlic, some hot paprika, but it is totally optional, some honey, some salt. I will mix everything together. Once that it is fully mixed, I will cover it and let it cook for about five to 10 minutes until there's no more water in the pot. The tomato confit is ready, so I put all the tomatoes in a mason jar and I top it off with the oil. I take the extra oil and I put it in a smaller jar and it is the best oil to add to a hummus or pasta or pizza. It is absolutely delicious. I do the same thing with the garlic confit, and if I have extra oil, I do the same thing as with the tomato confit oil. I will reserve it and use it with other meals. The beets are now cooled off, and the way I made sure they were ready is like with the carrots, if the blade of my knife pierced the beet easily, they're ready. I wish I could use glove to peel the beets and not have purple fingers for a day or so, but if I cut them with gloves, I will most probably end up cutting myself. 
Do you have a trick to remove the purple fingers faster? I would love to know. I cut the beets in slices and then I add some parsley, some garlic, some cumin, salt, olive oil, lemon juice, and I toss the salad gently until it is fully coated. I cover it with a lid and put it in the fridge with the carrot salad. Because the oven is now empty, I will set it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I start my dessert, a fancy vanilla chiffon cake. I use eight egg yolks and of course I check each of them to make sure there are no blood spots. I beat the yolks until it becomes airy. It takes about two to three minutes. I add some vanilla extract and mix it again. I add the neutral oil. Here I'm gonna use some sunflower oil. And I will add as well some plant-based milk to make it parv or non-dairy. I have a little helper that is adding the flour. And then she will add the baking soda. I absolutely love when my children are participating in the Shabbat prep because not only are they helping, but also they're eating better. <laughs> Did you ever notice that? That whatever a child prepares, they're going to eat better? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Once it is fully combined, I will set it aside and in another bowl, I will use six egg whites and mix them until they form stiff peaks. I wish I had my little helper for that part too as it takes about five to seven minutes, but I guess she saw what was coming and she left. Once I have these stiff peaks into the egg whites, I will add some sugar and incorporate it fully with the mixer once again. I start incorporating in the main cake batter little by little some egg whites using a spatula and not a spoon to let the cake be as airy as possible. It takes a little bit more time but it is totally worth it as this cake is so light and delicious. Once that the egg whites are fully mixed in, I will pour my cake mixture in a grease bun pan and to be honest I should be using a tube pan but I do not own one. As previously seen in my Working Mom Shabbat video, I add some chocolate syrup to turn this beautiful cake into a marble cake as the kiddos like it so much better like this and as you know me, happy kids mean a happy mummy. I will place it in the oven for 30 minutes. By now the chukchuka is cooled off and I will place it in an airtight container and put it in the fridge until it's ready to be eaten later tonight. The water from the cholen decreased by 50% so I will remove it from the heat and I will put it on the plata just before Shabbat until we're ready to eat it for Shabbat lunch. By the time I clean up the kitchen, put everything away, take a shower and finish setting up the Shabbat table with the help of our daughters, the cake is ready. And just before Shabbat, I simply put everything we have just prepared on the plata, including the green beans, the Moroccan fish, the cholent that I will leave on the plata overnight until we're ready to eat it for Shabbat lunch, and the veal teriyaki. The only thing that is left to do for my Friday Shabbat meal prep is to put out the salads just before we're ready to eat our meals. Thank you for being here. It means the world to me and know that in my book, you are simply fabulous. Since you are here until the end, write in the comments more Shabbat prep so I know I was not alone. If nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up.